So what are some things that we would have to forget about? Some obvious things that, come, that pop off of our heads, but what are some things that we would try to forget about? Embarrassing things. What's that? Embarrassing things. Something embarrassing? Okay. What else? Abuse. Being abused? Abuse? Other people? And these are all things that there it isn't so much embarrassing, it isn't so much that it's painful to <clears throat> to forget about those things. Like in other words, like this, like abuse, we might want to forget about it and have and have it not affect us. In other words, we, do, we don't want to just suppress it. Remember what Jung says, if we just suppress things, they're going to come back to haunt us later on. So maybe we'd like to be able to completely purge it from our from our from our, our minds. That would be ideal. But um, let's say that we, we could do that. But the person that you are today is, has been shaped by those things in the past. The abuse, uh, the embarrassing things, the, the people that we've met before. In our, in our, and so those things were important to us. So to forget about those things, even if they're embarrassing, even if they're horrific, is to forget about a, a big part of who we are. Because those are the things that shaped us. I think about like a person in your life that you might want to forget about, maybe a significant other. You wish you could forget about them. But at some point, that person was really important to your life. <clears throat> and so that means that you invested a lot of psychic energy into that person. You've invested a lot of emotions into that person. There's a lot of development that came from that person. And all of a sudden, one day, that one person who you thought about a lot to just kind of pull them out of your, of your thinking, well, that leaves a big hole in your thinking. Like, think about the kinds of things that we think about on a daily basis. Um, for example, um, how much time a day do you think you spend about, I'm sorry, how much time uh, a day do you think you spend thinking about what you're going to eat? Or thinking if you're going to eat. <laughs> like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 5 minutes. 5 minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Um, I, I know people who spend most of their day thinking about it. If you're somebody who's on a special kind of a diet, like a keto diet, or if you're you know, a vegan diet or something like that, something specialized, you have to commit more of your day to doing it. If you're someone like me, I have almost no sense of taste. That's why I like to eat things like buffalo wings and pizza because I can actually taste those. But my nose is, I have almost no sense of smell, and so therefore I have almost no sense of taste. Uh, right, so, so to me, food really is just, Shoulder shrugging. What do you want to eat? I don't know. And if we go to a, if, if you go to a restaurant, I look for the stuff that has the, the, the boldest flavors because that's the only stuff I can really taste. Like if you ask me, do you want eggs? I say, sure. How do you want them? And then whatever, it doesn't matter. You can make them however you like because I can't really taste them very much. So how much time a day do I spend thinking about what to eat? Ninety percent of my diet is two things: chicken tendies and pasta. Because I get home from the gym at night and those I can throw chicken tendies in the uh, in, in the air fryer, and by the way, they're chicken tendies because I'm an adult. I don't eat chicken nuggies. <laughs> so they're chicken tendies. I can just throw those in the air fryer, take a shower. When I get out, they're, they're done. I can eat them, and that's that. Or I can boil water and boil pasta while I'm in the shower, and that can come out, and then, I, and then it's, it's ready to eat. I don't have to sit there and go, what sounds good to me? Nothing sounds good to me, really. So that means I have to spend very little time thinking about what to eat. Some people spend a great deal of time thinking about what to eat. Now consider that in terms of other things of your life. How much time do you spend thinking about what you're going to wear? How much time do you spend a day thinking about how you're going to respond to that one annoying troll on, on social media? How much time a day do you spend thinking about what you're going to do the rest of your day, even? And you add all that time up, and you think about how much time that really is. And now if you consider what you could be thinking about otherwise, it's like if I, I imagine if I spent less time a day thinking about thinking or thinking about philosophy or thinking about essentially how best to live as a virtuous person, I imagine my wardrobe would probably be more imaginative. I imagine I would probably dress better if I spent more time thinking about that stuff, you know, clothing, instead of these other things. Um, you think about someone, I think like Mark Zuckerberg, here you go, the guy who runs Meta, runs Facebook. He was characterized for like a decade. He used to wear the same hoodie every day. Um, it wasn't the exact same physical hoodie. He had, I think I read that he had 10 of the exact same hoodies and 10 of the exact same pairs of pants. Why? Because that way when he wakes up in the morning, he grabs the hoodie, grabs the shirt, grabs the pants, puts them on and goes. 
he has to spend zero time thinking about what to wear. He just wear the same thing on this rotation every day. Um, I had a professor in college, um, of course I was in college, where else would you encounter a professor? Uh, his name was Gavin Lawrence. Not a very good teacher whatsoever, but the guy used to wear the same thing every day, the same gray shirt and the same gray pants every day. And I remember he would even, like, when he was describing something one time about Aristotle, he took some chalk and he drew across himself on this shirt because he was making a point. Now, many of us would look at that going, oh my god, he drew on his clothes? How much time do you think this guy spent thinking about what to wear? How much care do you think went into that? None. Because his mind was on other things. You find that when you're, when you're preoccupied with certain ideas or certain things, that means that you're not thinking about other things. So the goal in life, perhaps, is to try to maybe get rid of those things that you don't want to spend time thinking about. And instead, find the things in life that you want to invest time thinking about. And, of course, you have to start to delineate those things. And sometimes you might think, uh, think things like, wow, I'm spending time on thinking about this one thing, but I realize it's a waste. There's our word. Waste. Maybe it's a waste. Maybe. But man, try really hard not thinking about it now. That's like the red apple. Don't think about the red apple. Don't think about the thing that you're thinking about. Instead, replace it with something else that you're thinking about. That's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. It takes a lot of discipline and a lot of perseverance, and eventually you can realign your thinking. Because sometimes the thing is important to you. Like, for example, if you spend a lot of time every day thinking about what to wear, why do you do that? Because what you look like matters to you. What you look like matters to you. Um, it's difficult to come along and say, that shouldn't matter to you. But it does. But it does, and there's no reason it shouldn't. Oh, I shouldn't say that. There, is, there's, there's, there are good reasons it should matter to you, of course. But, you know, coming along and realigning your thinking like that is a very difficult thing to do. Because... The things that are important to you are important to you because they're important to you. I don't know that you woke up one day and said, I should think about what I should, well, I should think more about what I wear because that's important to me. I, I know I do have a couple of students who, who have written that, you know, that they, that that is important to them. But for the most part, how do I explain it? It just overtakes us. Like the things that are important to you are important to you because, not because you decided they were important, but because they just overtook you in some way. Does this make sense? Like, you know, what you should eat every day, or what you should wear every day, or how you should respond to people online. Those things just overtook us. We didn't necessarily think of it. So what I'm saying is that we can think better by, by actively rearranging those things that are important to us, which is hard to do. But if you realize it's for the best, that goes back to what we were saying earlier about wasting time. Are these things that we, that we spend time thinking about, are they wastes of time? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. We don't know until we really thought too much about them. Like, for example, does it really matter what you wear and what you look like? Yeah. Of course it does. Of course it does. Um, you know how we say things like, oh, uh, looks, you know, uh, looks really skin deep, but we shouldn't be so superficial to judge people by their looks? Maybe. But you know what? We do. And the fact of the matter is that prettier people do get along better in life than ugly people. This is true. Attractive people, you know, you talk about having privilege and bias. There's a, there's, a, there's a privilege for you. Attractive person privilege. All of our studies show that there's an intense correlation between attractiveness and life outcomes. Attractive people tend to do better in life. Nothing is everything. That doesn't mean that if you're ugly, that you're going to do badly. Thank God for that. <laughs> but it does mean that you have to adapt you have to adapt to that because attractive people will do better in life. And we also know that there's a correlation between intelligence and, and, and attractiveness. People who are attractive tend to be also tend to also have a, a higher IQ. And so there are all these things that start to pile up. So of course these things matter. What we look like matters because that's how people judge us initially. And unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever the case may be, a lot of people never get past that initial phase of, of judgment. In other words, a lot of our opportunities in life will be determined by people who, who go off of that first impression. So, what do we want that first impression to be? So, of course, looks matter. Of course, what you wear matters in all of this. Um, how much it matters, though, is going to be entirely up to you. you know, what you eat, does it matter? I imagine that I would probably function much better 
physically. If I wasn't going and doing jujitsu for, for two hours and then coming home and eating chicken tendies, <laughs> you know, and diet coke, I imagine if I if I ate better, I would probably perform better. The world may never know, though, <laughs> because that's not going to change. Because it's not something I want to spend a great deal of time thinking about. You know, so we have to manage those things out. What kind of things do we can we think about that will that will improve our lives? That will make us better. Sometimes forgetting about people in our past. It's going to be helpful. Sometimes it will be detrimental. But going more to, uh, directly to what he's talking about, waiting is painful. So waiting for something to happen is painful. Waiting for a person to change. If you're waiting for a person to change, how long is that going to take? Time. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for since, since high school for certain people to change. And how much longer am I going to wait? Probably into death. People don't change. People do not change. People only become more like themselves. They'll change for a little while, sometimes. We'll adapt a little while. But for the most part, I mean, nobody changes. We just become more like ourselves. And that's an uncomfortable thing, because we really want to believe someone's going to change, especially if we've been waiting for them for a while. Sometimes you've got to know when to walk away. Sorry, not sometimes. You always have to know when to walk away. That doesn't mean you walk away from everybody. That doesn't mean that, that somebody does one little thing wrong and you just throw up your hands and go, oh, can't wait for you. you know, people will, will adapt and modify in certain ways. But for the most part, figuring out the balance between these two, as I was getting at earlier, it's hard. Because if you walk away too soon, what if you had just stayed for one more moment? You know, who knows? Who knows? Um, I'll leave with this. I remember that when my, my mom had a heart attack, um, she, I, I met with the doctors, <clears throat> and the doctors just essentially said, listen, man, she's got a 5% chance of, of, of recovery. She was in a coma. And uh, I said, 5%, huh? Those are good odds. <laughs> and he said, the only reason I'm saying 5 is because I'm not supposed to say anything lower than 5. In truth, it's probably 0. But, you know, 5% is the lowest that medically we're supposed to give, so I'm saying 5%. He said, your mom's not going to recover. And so she was on life support at the time. And I remember talking to her, her neurologist, because she had uh, some other, you know, again, she, she had uh, some other injuries. And she was only, uh, he told me that when she was injured initially, many, you know, a long time ago, he only gave her a 5% chance of walking again. But she walked again. So I was thinking, hmm, 5% chance of walking, she did it, 5% chance of coming out of a coma, maybe, you know. But reason takes over at a certain point, and you can look at the charts, you can understand it, and then you kind of realize, yeah, this is, this is pretty grim. Um, I remember I, I, uh, nobody in my family could really make those decisions, so my dad just kind of said, well, you, you're the smart one, so you make all the decisions. <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure, right, for a 20-year-old to make decisions about his, about his mom living or dying. And so um, I made the decision to, to take her off of life support, and the doctor said, yeah, when you do that, she'll, she'll survive for about 24 to 48 hours, but that's going to be it. I'm like, okay. So I went and hung out at the hospital 24 hours, 48 hours. <clears throat> she hung on for three weeks. You know? That's a hell of a long time. That's, I did the math. That's more than 48 hours, <laughs> three weeks. And if there's anything that can mess with your head, I guess that might be it, right? Because now you're trying to think all kinds of things like, Maybe I took her off too soon. Maybe there is the fight going on. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that. You've, I'm sure you've all seen that cartoon of the, the guy who's, who's, who's digging, and he, he, you know, he turns around just before he's about to find the treasure. And, and we, we keep that thing in our head a lot of times, but we're like, if I could just wait. It's almost like we think in our minds that the positive result is guaranteed. If we just hang on. Um, Surviving three weeks in a coma is different from coming out of a coma and regaining the ability to talk and walk and eat and breathe and all of that stuff. Those are two very different things. Um, I don't think that I made the wrong decision on that, but if it can get in your head like anything else. Did I walk away from, did I pull her off life support too soon? Did I walk away from this person too soon? Did I give up on this situation too early? Did I not follow through enough on this? And unfortunately, life can only be understood backwards. You know, but we have to live it going forward. In other words, in retrospect, we can look back and, and second-guess ourselves a lot. But you can't live off of the second-guesses. Because you, you know, we, we wish we could go back and change things. 
but you can't. All you can do is keep moving forward, driving forward. So maybe that's the thing to keep in mind. Waiting is painful. That's true, <clears throat> especially because you have to keep living. And the longer you wait, the longer you delay your life. You put yourself on hold. Forgetting is painful because that means you have to forget about part of part of yourself. It means you have to forget the lessons that you could have learned otherwise. And knowing which of those two to do, no, that's suffering. It's also wisdom, though. It's also wisdom. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms.